guys today <clears throat> I'm sculpting my hand and it's a pretty simple process I had a student over and both of us were working on our hands this is what I got so far and you can see it's not perfect but I'm gonna try and get this done I don't want to use any more clay this is used clay that I use on some of my other projects and one of the things I try and tell students is that you want to sculpt but you want to sculpt a very geometric shape for your hand. So if you're looking at your thumb, you want to make it, you don't want to work on any details. So just simply looking at your, your thumb, curling it, and making it nice and smooth. It doesn't really matter. It's more about the geometric shapes. And a lot of times, one of the things I found with students is that they make the shape of the hand very narrow. So you, you know, it is actually wider. We look at this part and then we think, oh, it's going to be this wide, but there's a kind of a curvature to our hand that we have to kind of keep in mind. Having your hand in this position over and over is difficult. And a way to kind of counteract that is to use a smartphone to take photos of your wrist and photos from various vantage points. And then you can use that as reference because it's very difficult to see what's going on in the backside of your hand holding it in this exact pose. That is a very interesting thing to do, but nothing beats having a model in front of you. So if you can have a model that actually will supply a fist, that's much better than relying on photos. The reason I put this wedge here is that it supports the wrist, but there's a very fragile point right here because there's a lot of weight on the actual wrist and knuckles, especially in clay. But if you can support and add a little bit of clay here, it's going to hold while you're sculpting. Then once it firms up, you can remove it. And everybody knows that hands are very difficult to sculpt as well. But don't rely on little details like this. You should always try and do it. And of course, like, the best thing about this clay is that it's just easy to use. Like water-based clay, oil-based clay, you can add and you can remove easily. So I'm also looking at my knuckles and it goes from like the little one and they kind of like taper up. On mine, one thing I've noticed is that if you're looking from here, there's a little bit of a decrease here. So that means that we have to add a lot more clay on that knuckle and the index finger. So let's do that. I recommend people do this, but it's very difficult sculpting your hand. And you have to be honest and I do, recommend using calipers to measure your own hand because you don't want the hand to shrink. Now on this sort of sculpture I do recommend taking various photos of your hand and then referring to those photos on your phone because it's very difficult to look at your hand here and then in the back. If you use your, the back when you turn it of course it does various things to the ulna and the radius. Also keep in mind this bump. That is the stylet process of the ulna. And as you cross it, it will crisscross your, uh, your wrist. So very important. But with this, I would break it into two sections. I would do one section. This would be the figure for today. And then I would wrap it up. And then the next day, I would finish it and bring it to a completion. You don't have to make a full study of a hand. You already know that you can sculpt the hand. But the reason I break it into two sessions is that right over here in the wrist and the arm, this is so heavy because of the clay. And oftentimes 
this will just break if you don't have a way to support the clay here. So if you let this harden overnight and it bonds as one unit, you can start removing this for the second session and then you have a much stronger sculpture because you don't want this to be in your sculpture. It would be much nicer to kind of break it up here and have this empty. But that's up to you. I'm going to keep sculpting this. There's a lot of very interesting things happening, especially here. And what I like about this process, this tool, is that you can round things off. So if I am looking at this, I can start putting some detail without being an overbearing uh, amount of detail. So all of this kind of goes in like this. And as you get towards here, it might be a little bit more difficult to get into. That's why the scraping tools work well. So let's just um, do that. And I do like using these scraping tools that give you the texture. Because once I put this and I smooth it out with this kind of very rough type of tool, I can go over it and create more detail on top but I try not to do that in the beginning. So as I'm looking at this, I'm kind of like trying to pay attention to what the uh, fingers are doing and try to recreate that. Because they go in quite a bit. They kind of sink into the palm of the hand and you kind of want that. So this is what I've gotten so far. I'm about to let it uh, dry for now. And if you rotate it around, you'll see some of the imperfections. But, you know, it's been kind of sinking on me. And that's what, what happens. But I'm going to let this dry overnight. I'm going to cover it very loosely. There is an art to just like uh, putting a bag over it. And I did put like a stick here. It's one of those, you know, shish kebab sticks to hold the uh, sculpture down. And then if you look in the back, I put another one here just to kind of help it. But this is just a very like sketchy way of making something. You don't have to do these. I do these as practice and usually I'll take old clay and I'll just do a couple of these. It's always good practice to, to do one of these once in a while. And they do fire. Now if you're going to like fire this, I would recommend hollowing out maybe a little bit of the fist and just taking like a hole in the back and just kind of like puncturing up. Uh, what I tend to do is after this gets hard, I'll hollow out the fist and I'll actually build a tunnel into the arm itself. That way it vents out and I've never had, uh, you know, problems firing these. These are just fast sketches, but I wanted to do just a quick video because I haven't been doing a lot of videos on the channel. 